up in sundown you know our tides have have uh, really dropped out on us here the last few days it's been pretty consistent low so uh, you can really get up here on the on the shoreline here and you can really work these areas we're finding fish in knee deep water uh, throwing burner shads throwing uh, the original size uh, down south been throwing the knock and tail been throwing mirror lure little johns uh, both in uh, you know the smaller version which is the little john or the xl it's all been very uh very productive for us in these areas you know the biggest thing there is is locating your bait make sure that you got bait working in your area uh, getting on the grass finding that grass edge that's primarily where we're locating our fish is they're working just a little bit in and on top of that grass line edge up uh, maybe just a tad bit off depending on where you are and what kind of depth of water that you're in and what kind of structure is in and around that area beside your mud and your grass so some of these areas that are back here if you fish this you should know that you know there's there's scattered shell pockets that are back in here you know you've got a couple of back lake mouths that, that dump off into that that you can get up into those uh, you can wade those uh, a little smooth little whoosh a little mushy that gets back up in there so you know be aware of that you may want to stay in your boat and use your trolling motor if you want to 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 uh, go up and down those channels that go in there and you know you got back lakes that, that dump off a little bit further down here in the corner uh, so when you get in the very very back corner down into in uh, sundown there you got that little cut that runs all the way through and dumps back out in icw now that is weightable but it is it gets really squishy back in there on some spots so just be aware of that again that might be one of those areas that you may just want to stay in the boat and use your trolling motor if you have that and uh, just kind of hang out with that and work that uh, but again main things we've been working we've been working the, the down south in both the, the new flavor the big pop of pearl has been really very productive for us it's just an outstanding bait color uh, the color scheme that's in it is seems to be very very productive for us the fish reacting to it very well whether you have a, a really strong bite or whether you have a weak bite or or really what's going on there you're going to get reaction to it uh, also you know the, the burner of course she's got that in all three sizes he'll have that at the fish the uh, fishing show that's coming up this coming week march 1st through the 5th over in over in the houston area uh, if you're able to get by there and and visit with mr bossy there on the down south booth please do so also on the knock and tail and the marker 54 they'll be there as well so you may want to slide by there if you get that opportunity but you know we've been throwing the, the jerk shrimp been throwing the mullet run I'm from the marker 54 then the, of course the knock and tail in the heavy metal uh, in the greenback has been very good uh, of course the new new flavor that's going to drop at the fishing show with them is called rogue I mentioned that last week maybe the week before but it's a very productive color as well works in great clear water situation works in stained water situation even the dirty water situation because of the knock and tail you know it's got that glass beads that are in there so you can you can really work that bait a lot of different ways and it's very productive for you uh, primarily things that we've been in and around has been the majors and minors I preach on that and preach on that and just harp on it all the time it's if, if you're not incorporating that into your fishing day, you're missing out on opportunities to catch fish, especially if the situation uh, dictates that it's uh, kind of a tough day or an easy day or a slow day or whatever. You can always, you'll pick up a few more fish during those time frames. So make sure that you're paying attention to those. Uh, you know, weather patterns are fixing to probably start to really uh, change for us as we're fixing to head into March is that that's just a few days away springtime is right around the corner before you before, it'll be here before you know it spring breaks will be cranking up so and there'll be a few more people on the water so always take into this kind of stuff into an account when you're getting ready to uh, do a fishing trip or get on the water safety's a big deal weather's a big deal make sure that you align your day have a great game plan in place and be able to execute it the super flats this is another one of these areas that's uh, very, very good, especially as we're fixing to head into our springtime. Uh, you know, we're seeing consistent water temps now over the last few days to be in the low 70s. Some areas have gotten up into the mid 70s, 75. So that's very, uh, it's very encouraging to see that. And, you know, and the fish are reacting accordingly. You know, we're getting active trout bite that are up in these shallows. You know, you know if, that, if those water temps continue to stay, in those 70s like that for you know a couple more weeks or whatever you're going to start finding these bigger trout that's going to be hanging out up here in these shallower waters getting ready to lay some eggs uh providing we don't have another big cold front or something that's going to come down and change all that 
suddenly I don't see anything that's in the 10 day at the moment. So, but that's, you know, that's weather's always subject to change for us down here. It can, you know, 48 hours out is about the best that I'll ever look at a weather pattern. But, you know, out barring a, a big cold front to come down, that's our weather patterns are trending toward those mid 70s to upper 70s and, and kind of hanging out in there for a while. So that really bolds well. So you really want to target these areas like this on super flat. And if you know other areas that are that are equal to that, then I'll suggest that you would fish those if you're not necessarily fishing these particular areas. You know, the Super Flats has lots of grass on it. You've got great potholes that are in there. You've got lots of little little edges, little guts, little cuts that come in and out of these big back lakes that are there. You know, our uh, again, with our water levels that have, have dumped out on us and gotten lower, so these edges that are further out away from the shoreline, this fish have pushed out on top of that and fished out on those edges in a little bit deeper water just something for you to target and into work now can you find them up shallow oh absolutely we've been finding redfish in knee deep to five deep water some calf deep water top water bite has been really good uh, it hadn't been consistent but there's been days it's been very good you know we're getting blow-ups we're getting takes catching those fish having lots of fun watching the blow-ups takes place you know the redfish are hitting it trout are hitting it uh you know flounder will get up here i'm not gonna say flounder will hit the top water but that would be pretty interesting to see that take place uh but there are flounder that are laying up in here. So if you're a, you know, a, a plastics guy, primarily that's what I like to throw a majority of the time. We have found, you know, flounder that are up in here in some of these little guts and little potholes that are laying up here in and around the super flat area. You know, you can get up there from the Lydian Channel all the way around to the ranch house and you have an opportunity somewhere in and around that area that you can locate your fish. The points are always good if you can see those locate those underwater areas like that and, and really go to town working on those you know the back side of mud island has been pretty good uh, we found fish that are primarily red fish hadn't found a tremendous amount of trout in there they've been you know undersized trout there's lots of those that are around they're starting to really kind of move into our system uh you'll you'll get into an area and you'll catch you know 30 40 50 undersized trout from that you know 12 to 15 inch range a lot of fun to catch but if you're looking for some to to put into your box then you'll really want to target and look for these gut areas, a little bit deeper water, uh, your uh, potholes. Again, bait's the number one key thing that you got to locate and find. Once you kind of locate that and you can get into that area with that bait working and you've got these great grass flats that are all in these areas like this, even with the water dropping out like that, you can get in there in that knee deep to thigh deep water and you can really go to work and find these fish. They'll be up in there. Uh, again, majors and minors main things to really work during these time frames look at the, what the clarity is of your water if it's stained or if it's clear or if it's off color you know if you've got visibility down to a foot or more or less just those are all things to really take in consideration when you're choosing your color that you what bait that you want to throw in there if you're going to throw a top water bait you know make sure it's got that white or chrome underbelly to it so it really uh, stands out for you there those fish primarily will attack that so a lot of fun with the top water bait Double D's been pretty good as well. Again, the baits that I mentioned earlier, those baits are all in play, all in these areas here. We're in those transition days heading toward a full moon, so make sure that you take in consideration that as well. You know, from Copano Ridge all the way up here to where Redfish Lodge used to be to Rattlesnake Point, that big flat that's all out in here. You got Pete's Bend back behind that area. This is this has really been kind of a sneaky good little area here. You got, you know, you got guts that come through these little chain of islands that are right there that are deeper water. And when your water is really dropped out like it has, that's a really good area to get up there and get on the edge of that. And you can either wade down that thing, you can anchor up, and you can throw, you know, work some baits down the deeper edge of that if you want to on both sides of it. And that's the great thing about this thing is I love wading this little point that's out here all the way out here to this deeper water that's on this, this edge out here that cut through coming into Port Bay out of, out of Copano. So you work all this flat. You know, there's some scattered grass that's on it. If a little bit more grass would make it even that much better, and that's going to be your primary thing moving forward this spring is making sure you locate areas that's got grass on it. And if you can find a lot of grass, which there's lots of areas in our system that has that in place, those are going to be your primary spots that you're going to really want to target and fish around those particular things. You know, grass in and of itself is, is a good structure. The fish love that, whether it be redfish, whether it be flounder, trout, whatever. They like to get in and they get some comfort level in that, a little, little safety for them. They can use it for ambush points, and those are great things that they want to do. Uh, 
But another thing about this this edge out here on Rattlesnake Point, you got deeper edges that are off of that. So, you know, if you don't see bait that's working up there on the flat, on the skinnier side of it, get off on the edges and see if you can see presence of bait. Again, I've mentioned in the past, you know, if you see pelicans or if you see an osprey working or looking or hovering over a particular area, they're, they're looking at bait. So that's a great indicator for you to let you know that there's bait that's working up on that particular flat or an edge or out in a particular area if that's if that's how you're fishing a flat uh, rattlesnake point you know it gives you those things you've got structure that's in here you've got shell that's in here and you can fish on either side of it you can get either a windward or a leeward side whatever whatever works for you or whatever's producing for you primarily you know you may have to fish both sides to locate your fish but get back up in here back behind where redfish lodge used to be that's all weightable back in there you've got a great edge of shoreline that you can work all that particular area in there uh, you, you locate your bait in there and just go to town settle down be patient with it uh, some of these times especially as we're again we're in the wild card days or transition days headed toward a full moon so you probably want to downsize your bait size or profile size just a bit you know, maybe primarily throw your original size down south or throw the uh, smaller version of the knock and tail in the three and a quarter or the burner shad, uh, jerk shrimp. You know, that shrimp's going to start really starting to move in here before too long. So that's another great bait that you can tie on and you can free line that thing. You can work it up underneath the popping cork, depending on what your water clarity is. You can really work that bait over potholes and you can have very, very good production where that bait's very good. It's got lots of action on it and they've done a really good job over there at Market 54 producing these, these shrimp to make them look as lively as possible. So uh, when you're working on the backside here, like I say you've got mud in here, you've got a little scattered grass in here, you've got shell that's in that, all great structure things for, for fish to hold over and do. So again, what I mentioned earlier is make sure that you're patient. Don't, uh, don't leave an area too soon. Really work it. So if you got a uh, again, a major or minor that's going to pop up during your fishing time frame in a particular area. Fish through the whole the whole time frame. You never know when that bite's going to really kick in. It can happen early, it can happen late, it can happen during the middle of it. But, you know, uh, have yourself some options in there. You know, if you have to move or need to move during that, don't move far. You know, fish, fish don't necessarily take off and go a long way off. Sometimes it's just a, you know, a few yards one way or the other, and you can locate where those fish are hanging out. So again, make sure that you're paying attention to your weather patterns, what your water levels are, because some of these areas got lots of shell that's in it. And if you're not aware of that, you will uh, damage your boat just a little bit or put yourself kind of in a tough situation.